I'm not sure I want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Go ahead, babe. Just try. It's recording. I have some things that I need to say that have been on my mind for quite some time. And it's a touchy subject and people don't like it. And really, I don't care if you like it. I don't care if you share. I don't care if you just discard and hide it. Um, these last few years, literally these last few years, I've lost a lot of family members to cancer. Uh, my mother, who I still miss every single day, can't call her. My sister will be gone one year this month, and she was in her late 50s. And my dad, he died this year, all of cancer. And everybody, anybody you come in contact with, they don't have an issue with talking about any of these people. You know, um, like my sister, she would have been 59 this year. And, oh, what a shame. She died so young. Yes, she did. But she was a good person, too. And my parents, you know, mom was in her late 70s, dad was in his 80s when he finally passed this year. And people could talk about it all day long. And they're not uncomfortable about it. But what they don't want to talk about, and you never see or hear anybody really wanting to discuss is when a baby dies. Today is September 15th. It's 35 years today that my son passed away. He was 16 days old. He had what it was called acute peritonitis, which means somewhere in his peritoneal area, which is kind of like the intestinal area of your body, he had a pinhole. They think he was may have been born with it. And when he would go to the bathroom, um, as the solids, the waste would come out, uh, you know, like a normal baby would do, some of those, would, some of it would pass into that hole, and basically he was poisoning himself. And it was painful. He lasted 16 days, and they couldn't find out what was wrong with him in that time frame. A simple blood test probably would have found it. Today, if he was to be born today, he probably would have survived it. At that time, he still would have died. And I know this. It doesn't make it any easier. But the thing is, is that I miss him every day. 35 years, I still think of him every day. And there's nothing wrong with me talking about him. I've only recently described the day that he died to my husband. Um, and it was heartbreaking. I haven't, I haven't thought about it in such the detail that I can remember since he did pass away. And I think the last time I told anybody about that day, 35 years ago, was probably 34 years. So long overdue of me being able to speak about my son. And I think that when parents go through this, it doesn't seem like it's real. It seems unfair. They question their faith that they're Christians, you know, and I'm sure other faiths would also question their God. And there's nothing wrong with questioning God. And if you think I'm wrong, well, fine, go to hell, ignore my video. I don't think it's wrong to question God. And I don't think God is perfect like people claim He is because He has made mistakes. Even your Bible says that He has made mistakes. Nobody just admits it. And am I angry? Yes. I'm angry at this God that people glorify for letting any human being go through the hell that they've gone through. And He went through a lot. 16 days old, no baby, no child, no child of God should go through this hell if he loves us so much. And don't tell me it's the devil's work. I think the devil is nothing but a Christian's form of the boogeyman. And if I'm wrong for that, ignore me. You don't like it, just ignore it. I don't like the fact that he is gone. Does he need to be gone? Apparently so. 
or my daughter would not have been born because I would not have had children 18 months apart. I always said I would never do that. And they are about 18 months apart. And I am blessed with Victoria. And I love my daughter. I love her with all my heart and soul. She's my savior. Yeah, because she has done that. She has saved me from my suicidal thoughts that I've had throughout my life. And I'm not ashamed to say that I have those thoughts. Those thoughts. Do I have them now? No, because I'm medicated. I don't need to. I don't need to think about death. I got medicine that keeps that I keep on board, so I'm good there. But anyway, just the thoughts that I have are: let people talk about their children, the ones that they've had to bury. Even if they miscarried, if they wanted that baby, let them talk about it. It should not be taboo. We've had so many parents who have actually committed suicide just because they've lost their children and they can't handle it because nobody was wanting to listen to it. Nobody can stand it. Oh my God, let's not talk about a baby or a child that died. It happens. Let the mom, the dad, whoever was close to that baby talk about it. You will save more people that, that way. I think given the chance, if I had been able to talk about Wesley, Wesley J. Ledesma, any time that I felt the need, I probably wouldn't be this messed up now. Because when a person has to internalize their, their feelings, they have to suppress them, your body will react eventually and you get sick. And I'm fighting fibromyalgia, restless leg syndrome, and I believe a lot of it's from suppression, suppressing, sorry, and now my body's saying it needs to come out somehow, so we're going to do it this way. Let the parent talk. If you don't like what they're hearing, just let them talk anyway. Because you may be the only reason why they're around right now, because you listened. But I love my son. I love all my children. And if I believe in a hereafter, and I do, I'll reunite with him someday. I still miss him. Till I'm dead, till my last breath, I will miss him. But I don't expect this to go anywhere except for my own little, my own little need, my own little need to express this. So, and if, like I said, if you don't like what I'm saying, just click off. It's a nice way of saying screw up. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what, that's it. That's all I got to say on that. Take care.